swimming season after a teenager had a medical emergency at this private swim club. We'll tell you what we know so far. And that warm weather is bringing crowds outside for lunch. How eating from a food truck is actually putting food into the mouths of young people in our community. And the verdict is in. What the historic ruling in Donald Trump's criminal case could mean for the November election. Fox 55 News First at 10 starts now. The area's only primetime local newscast. This is Fox 55 News First at 10. And earlier tonight, we brought you that moment when it was announced a jury found Donald Trump guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in his trial in New York. Thank you so much for joining us here. First at 10. I'm Brian Miller and I'm Brianna Bias. Now this makes him the first former president in U.S. history to be convicted on felony crimes. Connor Hansen breaks down today's verdict. With today's verdict, former President Donald Trump was not only convicted on 34 felony counts, he also made history becoming the first former U.S. president to be convicted of a crime. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. Minutes after 12 jurors found Donald Trump guilty on all 34 counts, the former president delivering a message to the American people. It's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our Constitution. Trump, who was indicted in connection with a hush money payment to an adult film star ahead of the 2016 presidential election, now faces a maximum sentence of four years in prison. There were people who clearly were thrilled by the result, and there were people that will be very sad by it. I was saddened to watch it. I, I disagree with this verdict. Jurors reaching their conclusion after asking the judge overseeing the trial to review testimony from David Pecker and Michael Cohen, as well as directions guiding deliberations. While this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes through the courtroom doors by following the facts and the law and doing so without fear or favor. Despite the verdict, neither the conviction nor any sentence prevents Trump from running for president. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people and they know what happened here and everybody knows what happened here. Trump's sentencing was set for July 11th. That's just four days before the start of the Republican National Convention. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox 55 News. And with that trial behind us tonight, what's next for the former president? And how could the verdict potentially affect the 2024 elections? Earlier tonight, we sat down with PFW political science chair Mike Wolf. And he tells us right now, a lot of voters are pretty set on which party they'll vote for once November rolls around, no matter the verdict. Wolf says the judge will bring down a sentence on July 11th, just days before the GOP convention. We've kind of said, well, this election year, we have to have everything solved by election day. Well, we also need to make sure our courts and the accused uh, have their fair say. And uh, we've kind of, I guess, blended those in a little way that's probably not good for either the election or for the court system. And reactions from local GOP leaders are also coming in tonight. Senator Mike Braun on X calling the verdict, quote, a blatant abuse of our justice system, end quote. He says the trial was a political stunt and thinks Trump will still win the November election. And Representative Jim Banks with a pretty colorful response to that verdict. We'll have updates for you on Trump's sentencing over on WFFT.com. And a Fort Wayne teenager fighting for his life tonight. He suffered some sort of medical emergency at a neighborhood pool. This happened just around one o'clock today at the Glen Aqua Pool. This is a private swimming facility near Snyder High School. We asked police if it was related to swimming, but they said they couldn't tell us how it happened. Now, they have to interview the victim. Right now, they can't do that. He is in life-threatening condition in a nearby hospital. Fort Wayne Police Sergeant Jeremy Webb says parents need to follow some basic tips when letting the kids play at the pool. Make sure if you have younger kids that that they can you know that they are properly supervised that there's lifeguards on staff that uh, if they can't swim they have proper flotation devices or they're with uh, a swimmer if they have any medical issues make sure those are tended to uh, prior to going they think what happened today was simply an accident but they have to investigate every single fact and every angle just in case there was some sort of foul play we'll update you as soon as we learn more about what happened 
Well, the sunshine and the warmth today it is starting to feel more and more like summer as we make our way through this week. Yes, we're almost in June now. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Beverly Perry for tomorrow's conditions. Yeah, June, just a couple days away and today beautiful tomorrow, equally as nice and a little bit warmer too. We do have a clear sky overhead right now. It feels fantastic out. 61 degrees in Fort Wayne right now. 63 in Marion and we're matching that in Huntington and a little bit cooler in Kendallville. Where we're sitting at about 58 degrees. This is the last day for three more school districts and this is done. We're done with this planner until next school year. Mid 50s. That's what you can expect at this bus stop. Come tomorrow morning. Grab the sunglasses. You're going to need them not only in the morning, but also in the afternoon. We have more warmth on the way. Plus, I'm also tracking a little rain for the weekend. Have the details coming up. Beverly, thank you. Well, if you're a Verizon customer, you may be one of thousands who saw an outage tonight. The company confirms on X that users nationwide lost service earlier this evening. Down Detector says at one point more than 12 and a half thousand customers were affected. That number has now dropped with a little over a thousand outages just before our newscast. Verizon says it's doing everything it can to solve that issue. Well, Fort Wayne businesses served up a beloved local tradition today. Lunch on the Square was back for its 16th year and we saw some food truck favorites. Yeah, and they're also doing something called the Lunch Means More initiative. Basically what that means, they take proceeds from a chosen food truck each week and then a local law firm matches up to 15% of what they made and gives that all back to the not-for-profit blessings in a backpack. Now, if you want to get out and check this out, it's simple. You walk around, you enjoy some live music, visit vendors, try some. You can also enter to win a downtown Fort Wayne gift card. And we spoke with a mom today who said this event is perfect, even if you have your hands full. A really big double wide stroller. Um, and so I love being able to find places that don't have like stairs or elevators where we can just, you know, park and then pull the stroller up and participate in an event like this. Yes, no stairs, enemy of the stroller, and uh, lunch on the square. It runs for the next 10 Thursdays. They will not do it on the 4th of July holiday, though. If you want to see a list of all the live musicians and much more about this event, you can just click on this story on our website at WFFT.com. With the school year wrapping up now and summer break on the horizon, camps in the Summit City are getting ready for a pretty busy season. Camp Red Cedar is one of them, and they're adding some new mobility inclusive activities this year. Archery is one of them. Development Director Michael Kuhn says it's amazing to see everyone, no matter their abilities, having fun and interacting with their new activities and equipment. Not only are they going to have fun and be included, but it's a safe place. Our counselors are trained and certified in first aid and CPR. They're trained on their individual camper. They're offering one-to-one -one person centered care for that camper. And so they can rest easy knowing that they're here and are going to have a good time but also be safe while they're doing it. The camp also received water wheelchairs and beach mats so the wheelchair users can get in and out of the water with ease and enjoy the sandy beach with the rest of the campers. Kuhn says adding these barrier breakers prevents disabled individuals from feeling excluded and alienated. You can find more information about Camp Red Cedar through the story on WFFT.com. And another big summer program that kicks off is the ACPL, the Summer Lunch Series gets started at the Allen County Library tomorrow at the Library Plaza. It'll take place every Wednesday starting next week and then running through July 26. To see which locations offer that program, just head to our website, WFFT.com. And celebrating the joy of learning and discovery, the Allen County Public Library is part of the SPARK Summer Learning Program it gets started this Saturday. That will also run July 31st. This year's theme, Adventure Begins in the Library. The program promotes keeping students fresh on their literacy skills over the summer. It is free, open for everybody, and is available at all library locations. And for a fourth consecutive year, Downtown Live is going to hit the stage in the Summit City. The concert summer series runs every Friday night through August 9th at the PNC Plaza. Downtown Live comes just after Fort Wayne gets the first designated residential drinking area. The one downtown includes the PNC Plaza Downtown Live invites you to come by this year for some live music over drinks. The first night kicks off tomorrow and runs until 8. A new Alliance Health Center's clinic is coming to Fort Wayne's southeast side. The Bridge of Grace location will focus on primary care as well as maternal health and midwifery. The clinic is, ex is expected to open mid-June running 8 to 6 Monday through Friday. 
Well, coming up, police arrest two murder suspects with the help of a music video. We'll have new details emerging from a homicide that happened back in September. Plus, the blood supply is running low. Donors are being called on to help solve a shortage. How you can give back. And later, unlocking your learning potential. The MindCap Center is tonight's Fox 55 community champ. We'll tell you how it's helping people with memory loss and more in our next half hour. You're watching Fox 55 News First at 10 with Brian Miller, Brianna Bias, Chief Meteorologist Beverly Perry, and Sports with Sports Director Justin Prince. The news you need from the area's only primetime local newscast. Welcome back. A man accused of threatening multiple children with a gun was arrested and now faces several charges related to that incident. The police say it all happened back on April 11th at the Riverbanks complex. They say 60 year old David Arnold there on your screen kidnapped children and pointed a rifle at them. No word yet on how old the victims are or what led to that incident. For now, Arnold is charged with kidnapping, criminal confinement, battery and intimidation. A new court document suggests a former assistant football coach at Garrett High School says he looked for pornographic, pornographic images and videos of 16-year-old girls online. Those details came in just one day after he was arrested for possessing child pornography. The documents say Brody Dixon told investigators he accidentally uploaded the pornography to a Dropbox account after he downloaded it. Dropbox then flagged it and reported the content to police. Dixon is not currently accused of any misconduct with his students, but right now he's suspended from his coaching job. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito is refusing to recuse himself after the Supreme Court prepares to release its biggest decision of the year. Those include some involving former President Trump. Caroline Shively has more. As the Supreme Court released a number of decisions on Thursday with more on the way, Justice Samuel Alito faces calls to recuse himself from pending decisions involving former President Donald Trump and January 6th rioters. That's because of this, an upside-down American flag flown over his home in 2021 right after the attack on the Capitol, as first reported by the New York Times. The flipped flag has become a symbol of those who back Trump's false claims the 2020 election was stolen. He can't play fast and loose with these political symbols without jeopardizing his own integrity. Alito responded in a letter to Congress on Wednesday, saying his wife hung the flag outside their Northern Virginia home after a personal attack on her from a neighbor, writing... I was not even aware of the upside down flag until it was called to my attention. As soon as I saw it, I asked my wife to take it down, but for several days she refused. Alito also addressed this appeal to heaven flag that flew over the couple's vacation home. The flag dates back to the Revolutionary War, but has recently become popular among Christian nationalists. The justice says his wife bought and paid for the house and has a right to fly what she wants there. The idea that a Supreme Court justice would have to respond to any kind of suggestion from Democrat senators that he should recuse himself because of such demonstrations that are completely covered by the First Amendment is absolutely absurd. The Supreme Court will likely release its decisions on Trump's presidential immunity in the Capitol rioters in the next few weeks. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. The lawmakers are now pressing U.S. Department of Justice to investigate the oil industry for price fixing. In a letter to DOJ, nearly two dozen Senate Democrats pointed to allegations against oil tycoon Ty Sheffield. They cited hundreds of messages between him and OPEC officials allegedly discussing price and market dynamics. Sheffield's denying the allegations, arguing those messages are being misrepresented. And the Supreme Court now siding with the National Rifle Association in a ruling, curbing pressure from campaigns, the activists, and the government. Its ruling suggests that government leaders cannot try to coerce organizations like the NRA over opinions that they disagree with. The NRA suit was filed against a former official New York State Department. He says the official tried to make insurance companies cut ties with the NRA and even threatened to have further action if they didn't comply. A new program from the IRS is going to be sticking around. Let's you know how direct file is bolstering the 2025 we have more warmth and sunshine heading our way. Plus, I'm also tracking our next round of rain. I'll have the details next.
55 News. Chief Meteorologist Beverly Perry with your hometown forecast from the Fox 55 Severe Weather Center. It is an absolutely gorgeous day, jam-packed with a lot of sunshine and our high temperatures topped out in the lower 70s. The best part? Well, I guess there was two best parts. Well, low wind and low humidity levels too. And what if I told you we're going to copy and paste this plus a little bit more warmth tomorrow? That's what's on the way. We have a clear sky overhead right now. This is due in part by an area high pressure that also brought us the sunshine yesterday or today, and that's going to be the case tomorrow. It'll bring us a lot of sunshine. Notice these temperatures are dropping off fairly quickly under that clear sky. We're already at 55 degrees in Auburn, down to about 61 now in Fort Wayne and about 62 in Bluffton as well as Marion. And our temperatures are going to continue to drop off under that clear sky. So yes, we're going to continue to maintain a clear sky overhead. We may see a few wispy clouds overnight and also from time to time tomorrow. But overall, you're still going to see the stars tonight. Clear and cool temperature wise right near 48 degrees. A great opportunity to open the window and let that nice cool breeze in and give that air conditioner a break because we all know the summertime heat's definitely going to be coming back. As we go throughout the day on Friday, we expect a lot of sunshine early in the morning, also through the lunch hour, and then it's not until the afternoon hours that we'll have some of those high wispy clouds kind of trickling. It won't be blocking out the sun whatsoever. The sun will still shine through those thin clouds, but tomorrow afternoon is certainly going to be a little bit warmer. Highs into the mid to upper 70s and we're going to keep those humidity levels low. But what you're also going to notice in the afternoon, the wind, it's going to be a little bit stronger, but hey, we can handle it, right? Turning the page to the weekend. Now, as we go through Friday evening, oh, we're looking at the cloud cover increasing into the overnight hours, turning cloudy. We're going to start Saturday morning off under the clouds, and then we're going to bring in some rain chances closer to about the lunch hour. And those rain chances, they're honestly going to continue through at least the rest of Saturday. So your soggiest part of the day on Saturday is going to be the afternoon and evening hours. So if you have anything to do out and about Saturday, the morning is it. Those showers do continue into the overnight hours and they finally taper off Sunday morning before daybreak. This thing's going to shift off to the east, so the rest of Sunday is actually looking pretty good. Temperatures over the weekend, look at this. Middle 70s on Saturday, mid to upper 70s do return on Sunday. And you know what? If you've been searching long and far for that warmth, Hey, look no further. The first full week of June. Yes, June. Make no mistake. We're flipping the calendar. We're looking at high temperatures at least early in the week in the low 80s, and we do have some storm chances in store for us as well. But Sunday afternoon might be a good day to go sit at the park or something. Yes, we won't have a lot of sunshine. The cloud cover is going to be slow to go on Sunday. Oh, okay. But okay. at least it'll if you're patient, nice. maybe. Yes, if you're patient. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll take it. Thank you, Thanks, Beverly. Beverly. Well, you'll find Beverly's latest forecast and more over on the Fox 55 Severe Weather app. It's always free to download through your phone's app store. Well, after a test run across 12 states, the IRS plans on keeping its free online filing program for tax season next year. Direct file will be available to taxpayers nationwide. The pilot program for 2024 considered a success. More than 140,000 people used it, surpassing the IRS's expectations. The direct file program cost about $32 million this year and is expected to expand to $75 million price tag. That could change, though, depending on how many people use that program. Economic growth has been revised to a slightly weaker reading for the start of the year. The first quarter, gross domestic product expanded 1.3%. That's down from the initial estimate and also down from a percent reading from this time just a year ago. Pending home sales in April almost down 8% from March. The National Association of Realtors says this is due to buyer fatigue from the expensive housing market and those high interest rates. Pending home sales means the contract's been signed, but the deal has not yet gone through. Turning our attention to our region, former Indiana Senator Joe Donnelly is returning to the Hoosier State. He confirmed that today on his ex account. And he says, Don and Donnelly says that he'll be stepping down from his position as the U.S. Ambassador to the Vatican. He says he'll leave the position on July 8th and has not yet given a reason for that decision. Donnelly was made the Ambassador to the Vatican back in 2022 after he was nominated by President Biden.
Meanwhile, Governor Eric Holcomb is leaving Indiana and taking a short, a short trip to Europe. The governor will lead an economic development trip overseas where he'll visit France, Belgium and the Netherlands. He says he wants to strengthen Indiana's relationship with those countries when it comes to tech and energy innovations. The trip began today and Holcomb's office says he'll return on June 8th. Well, the third case of the bird flu is reported in the U.S. Now that news comes out of Michigan, and it marks the second time the disease has been found in that state. A farm worker says they had direct contact with infected cattle and they experienced mild respiratory symptoms. Health officials say the symptoms were not seen in the previous two cases, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's getting stronger. Instead, they suggest the new symptoms could help them determine how that worker contracted the bird flu in the first place. And the American Red Cross says the blood supply is getting dangerously low, not just in Indiana, but across the country tonight. It's noting fewer donors are giving blood with around 20,000 fewer donations over the last month than the Red Cross says it needs. TSA suggests the shortage will be felt during the summer when the traveling summer season could impact whether repeat donors are able to give blood. The Red Cross is calling on anyone who could donate to do so, saying... Through June 9th, doctors will get a Tetris Plus Red Cross shirt while supplies last. Yes, if you're a Tetris fan, you got to get yourself one of these. It's a photo from the shirt. The Red Cross donors also have a chance to win a trip to New York and meet the creator of Tetris himself. How about that? Details on all of that stuff can be found right now on WFFT.com. And after the break, two more men behind bars in connection to a homicide from September. Hear how police linked these suspects to the crime. Plus, it's time to talk regional high school baseball. Justin checks in with one of our five area teams that are still alive later in sports. The area's only primetime local newscast. Thanks for staying with us tonight. Leading off our second half hour, a shooting that left one man in critical condition. Last night, police were on the scene near 1500 Woodside Avenue at around 10 to 20. And they say officers found a man with a gunshot wounds to his leg. Now, he was taken to the hospital where... We're told he's fighting for his life tonight. So far, no one's been arrested, and there's no threat to the public. Tonight, two more suspects in a homicide from September of last year have been arrested. It was 21-year-old Corian Parks and 17-year-old Lamont Martin, the two men on your left there, the most recent to be charged in the murder death of Avion Parker. They joined Lamont's brother, Christopher, up there, and then Terrence Sanders. They were also arrested on murder charges back in January. Well, it all is linked, they say, to a crime that happened in Fort Wayne and then a music video that the suspects were involved in. They said they made that music about the murder and along with cell phone video, they tracked down the four men responsible. Court documents say it was September 12th when a shootout began over a gang war that had boiled over at the Villa Capri Apartments. The victim was killed in that shootout. His younger brother was injured. And Chad Daybell is found guilty Thursday of murder and conspiracy charges in the deaths of his first wife and two children. And his second wife, in a case Idaho prosecutors claim, was fueled by power, sex, money, and other spiritual beliefs. Cheryl Hubbard has more. Mr. Daybell, if you and counsel would please rise, I'm going to have the clerk read the verdict. Chad Daybell showed no emotion in court as the verdict was read aloud. Guilty on all counts. Not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Tylee Ryan. Guilty. After deliberating just two hours, a jury convicted Daybell and the deaths of his first wife, Tammy Daybell, and the children of his second wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. 16-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow were last seen in September 2019. Their bodies were found buried on Daybell's property in June 2020. Daybell's first wife, Tammy, was found dead in her Idaho home in October 2019. Idaho prosecutors claim the killings were fueled by power, sex, money, and apocalyptic spiritual beliefs. It's a sad day. Family members of the victims were visibly emotional outside the courtroom following the verdict. JJ, Papa loves you. JJ, I miss you. JJ's grandfather, Larry Woodcock, says he's finally able to breathe now that justice is being served. Prosecutors are now seeking the death penalty for Chad Daybell. Whatever sentence the court and the jurors 
decide on, I will absolutely live with it. Terrell Hubbard, Fox 55 News. Meanwhile, the NCAA agrees to drop a transfer rule for student athletes. With that agreement, students would be able to start playing right away if they move to a new school. Now, a judge still needs to approve this agreement. Right now, athletes who transfer more than once are required to sit out an entire season before they can compete again. The NCAA also going to issue an additional year of eligibility to students who are impacted by the rule. And there's a new report now from the Washington Post that says in 2022, TikTok offered the U.S. government a deal to give it unprecedented control of the app. But the Biden administration rejected that deal. Hillary Vaughn has more. The Biden administration rejected a deal that would have given them partial control over TikTok, a compromise that TikTok thought might help them avoid an all out ban. But it didn't ultimately solve the problem, which is TikTok is owned by a Beijing based business, which means the Chinese Communist Party has influence over it. The Washington Post reports the deal on the table would give the U.S. government veto power over each new hire at TikTok, let a defense contractor monitor TikTok's source code and give the feds a kill switch to shut down the app if anything were to go haywire. But a senior Biden administration official telling The Post the only acceptable option is completely cutting off TikTok from China for national security concerns, saying they, quote, determined more than a year ago that the solution proposed by the parties at the time would be insufficient to address the serious national security risks presented. It became clear that divestment from its foreign ownership was and remains necessary. Republicans say this half measure fix floated by TikTok would have made the U.S. operate just like the CCP. Why would we choose to do what TikTok has already done? And that is to give the government access. Time is ticking for TikTok to put themselves up for sale and find a buyer if they want to continue to be on smartphones in America. But instead of doing that, they are busy suing over the divestment order signed into law by President Biden. A U.S. appeals court in D.C. will be hearing the case and has fast-tracked the process to get a ruling by December 6, leaving time for the Supreme Court to weigh in if needed. Now, TikTok has until January 19th to divest to an American company or face a ban. In Washington, Hillary Vaughn, Fox News. Got a new plan to prevent disasters for Boeing. Still had a look at how the company looks to move forward after a string of scary incidents. And up next, the Mind Cap Center and how it helps people boost their ability to learn. Tara Brantley talks with tonight. Helping people increase their learning potential is at the core of an organization called MindCap, and it's getting ready for a Fort Wayne first this summer. Joining me now with more about it is Dr. Jean Zayer, founder of the Fort Wayne nonprofit. Dr. Zayer, thanks for coming in today. You have brought with you a model of a human brain to kind uh -huh. of illustrate mm -hmm. what we are talking about. How has MindCap help people increase their learning potential. Mm. We use an amazing program that was used since World War II to help mm. Holocaust survivors get their thinking back. Mm -hmm. Very fascinating. As soon as I discovered it 25 years ago, I knew, oh, this is gonna change everything for the students that I worked with. And so then, about nine years ago, we started the MindCap Center with people that I've trained in the program, and we love doing the work we get to do. So is this primarily for those who have cognitive impairments, those who have memory loss, et cetera, or can anyone use this type of system? Perfect question, because actually anyone can get better with their thinking. Just think about it. Don't we want our brain to work the very best it can possibly work? Right. So the frontal lobes, the front part of the brain, is often what we are focusing on with executive functioning. Now it's pulling from all the lobes of the brain, okay. but having that executive functioning working well in our prefrontal cortex helps us to handle anxiety, helps us if we're a gifted kid to be able to stay focused and get more done. Or if I'm a an adult with ADHD and I, I struggle with impulse control, or I'm a person that had a brain injury, whether I'm five years old or 55 years old, the program can help the brain work better. So what types of accomplishments have people been able to see because mm. they went to MindCap? Mm. Had some people that their short-term memory came back mm. and they didn't know if it ever would. Uh, one was due to a motorcycle accident and another was a young man had had multiple sports concussions. Mm. And the, his mother remembers the day that he looked at her in the car and said, Mom, do you remember when I was five years old? 
and he started remembering something that he had lost. So he lost long-term memories and those even came back. We've had kids that have been able to go off medications for ADHD mm. and be able to uh, rewire their brain so that they can focus without medication. I mentioned earlier you're getting ready for a Fort Wayne first. Something happening this summer. Tell us about that. Such a big deal. It's called Shorish, which is a Hebrew word for roots or the source. And it's Shorish USA, a conference where anyone in the city can come mm -hmm. and learn about this method. Dr. Zayer, thanks for joining us again and good mm -hmm. luck with the workshops that are taking place this summer. Thank you. We have more information about the workshops. They're going to take place in Northside High School July 8th through the 12th. Simply go to this story on our website, WFFT.com. And that was Fox 55's Tara Brantley reporting. Well, more than a million bed rails are now being recalled after manufacturers learned of two people dying. And that recall involves two models of adult portable rails. From the Medline Company, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says the products pose a risk of entrapment and asphyxia. Anyone with those rails should stop using them right away and contact Medline for a refund. And ahead of their trip to space this weekend, the Boeing represents a new safety plan to the federal government. And they say the plan looks to address a series of safety problems that have been plaguing the company. Caroline Shively goes over that plan that Boeing presented to the FAA. After a series of safety problems, including a near-catastrophic mid-air blowout of a door plug on a 737, Boeing officials met with the Federal Aviation Administration on Thursday to lay out their new safety plan for all of its aircraft. Boeing has laid out their roadmap, and now they need to execute. The Boeing plan includes increased employee training, a stronger anonymous reporting system from employees, increased input from users, including pilots, and improvements to their manufacturing process. The FAA required Boeing to create the plan to address their systemic quality control issues after the January door plug incident on an Alaska Airlines flight out of Portland. The National Transportation Safety Board blames loose bolts for the blowout on the 737 MAX 9 aircraft, but whistleblowers have since come forward claiming larger problems at the industry giant, including on their production lines. Bottom line, we will continue to make sure every airplane that comes off the line is safe and reliable regardless of how many planes Boeing builds. This all comes five years after two deadly 737 crashes killed 346 people. Boeing pledged safety improvements then, and as has become so clear after Alaska 1282, uh, that, that was more smoke and mirrors than it was action. The crisis at Boeing led the FAA to force the company to slow their production of the 737 MAX, which has forced some airlines to slow their plans to increase their fleets. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox 55 News. We have more warmth and sunshine heading our way. Plus, I'm also tracking a little bit of rain for the weekend. The details, they're next. Good news. Chief Meteorologist Beverly Perry with your hometown forecast from the Fox 55 Severe Weather Center. We had a whole lot of sunshine throughout the day today and high temperatures topped out in the lower 70s and we have more warmth and sunshine on the way for tomorrow. Right now, we do have a clear sky overhead temperatures fairly comfortable. Borderline chilly though in Angola where we're coming in at about 54 degrees, 55 in Kendallville, still holding steady to 61 in Fort Wayne and matching that in Bluffton right now. We do have a clear sky overhead as we continue through the rest of the overnight hours and temperatures are going to drop pretty quickly. We're talking overnight lows falling into the upper 40s tonight under that clear sky. Still going to be a beautiful one. We're going to keep the wind calm too. Bus stop forecast. This is officially the last bus stop forecast for the school year. We have our last three schools experiencing their last day tomorrow. As you get ready for the bus stop, temps mid 50s. It's going to be a sunny and cool start to the day, but in the afternoon, it's going to be feeling fantastic. 8 o'clock Friday morning, a lot of sunshine is expected across the area. Same the case right around the lunch hour. Perfect opportunity to get out and about and have lunch outside or even take a lunchtime stroll. In the afternoon, the wind will pick up just a little bit, 10 to 15 miles per hour out of the southeast, and we'll have a few high clouds across the area in the afternoon, but we're keeping the forecast area dry, warmer, and low humidity levels. It's going to feel great out there. 78, that's the expected high, not only in Decatur, but also in Portland. 77 in Fort Wayne and 76 
in Angola. Now things are going to change a little bit as we head into the week. I'm tracking our next system that's set to arrive towards the second half of the day on Saturday. So we get through Friday evening pretty good. We're looking fantastic Friday night. It is dry Saturday morning dry and then here's the afternoon hours. Showers will encompass the entire area and we're looking at those showers continuing through the evening and into the overnight hours too. By Sunday daybreak, that's when all this stuff will be tapering off the clouds. They're going to linger a little bit longer, probably until the early afternoon hours until we finally can break into some sunshine. Now, how much rainfall heading our way right around three quarters of an inch to about nine tenths of an inch once it's all said and done. So a decent amount of rain is in fact heading our way. Highs on Sunday right near 77 degrees. We have a little bit more humidity on the way for early next week. Dew points in the 60s. We can handle it and high temperatures. They'll be topping out in the low 80s. And now from Fox 55 News, Sports Director Justin Prince with the area's most local sports. Hey, good evening, everyone. We have just three weeks left in the Indiana high school baseball season. And with regionals approaching in just two days, there are still five teams from the 260 still alive. One of those five is the Homestead Spartan Sparty. No stranger to the regional round. They're set to make their fourth straight trip to this stage. Nick Biles squad is the reigning regional champs from a season ago. And although the Spartans head in just 18 and 10 overall on the year with a majority of their group back from last year's squad, they feel pretty good about their chances to go in and repeat this weekend. Winning sectionals four years in a row, it's, it's not an easy, easy thing to do. Um, I think it really helped us, gave us kind of like a momentum boost because kind of had an up and down year, didn't play well at, to start, and then couldn't really find consistency. So I think winning those three games helped us kind of find something, get into a little bit of a rhythm, and we're, we have some momentum going into regionals, I think. Winning it in years past and winning regionals last year, I think it's just something that we know that we can do it and we know that we have the talent to do it again. So just that belief and confidence that we have going into it is going to give us an edge. Homestead is going to play rival Carroll for their regional crown out at Plymouth High School on Saturday. First pitch is set for 11 a.m. For a full look at all of the regional pairings, you can head on over to WFFT.com. Staying on the diamond, Tin Cap's looking to get in the win column for the first time this week against Wisconsin. Top six in this one, game all square at one apiece. Ethan Salas at the dish, and he cranks this ball to right. It one hops the fence. He's into second with an RBI double. Tin Cavs take a 2-1 lead. Very next batter, Homer Bush Jr. up, and he's going to trade places with Salas. He doubles into left center. Salas touches home. Fort Wayne takes a two-run lead at that point, but just like the last two nights, they couldn't hang on to their lead. Bottom eight, all tied at three. Last night's hero does it again. Ramon Rodriguez doubles down the line and left. Two runs come in. T-Rats go up two. They tack on two more, and... And the Tin Caps, their third straight loss to open the series 6-3. Your final game four tomorrow night at 740. Switching over to the college game for the first time ever. The Northern Kentucky baseball team is going to the NCAA tournament and they have former Concordia Lutheran standout Traven Moss to thank as a big reason for being there. Traven hit 538 with a homer and 12 RBI in last week's Horizon League tournament helping the Norse clinch their first ever HL tourney crown. A sixth year senior, Traven was named the tournament's most valuable player earlier this week. The Norse found out they were heading to Knoxville to face the top seed in the entire tournament in Tennessee and regionals. But hey, you know, that doesn't bother Traven one little bit. Nameless, faceless opponent. They teach us that every single day we preach it. Um, and it's the same thing. Uh, they're human just as we are. We know what they're capable of, but we also believe in us. We believe in our guys. So just to go there, um, make the most of the experience, make the most of the opportunity. Um, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I think to, to be there, um, to have this opportunity, we go there, play our game like we have been, play hard. Um, and we don't worry about the outcomes. Whatever the outcome is, it's gonna take care of itself. We're gonna focus on what we can control. Um, we always say control the controllables and wherever that takes us, we're happy, man. And, and we're uh, excited for the opportunity. Traven and the Norris will face the Volunteers on Friday at 7 p.m. down in Knoxville. Sticking with college sports, it's never too early to start thinking about some college hoops, right? And while the weather starts to turn cold next fall, the PFW men's basketball team will be enjoying the Florida Sun. Event organizers for the 2024 Sunshine Slam announcing today that the Mastodons will be a part of the field for the eight-team event this fall. The games will be played November 25th and 26th at the Ocean Center in Daytona Beach, Florida. The Dons will be a part of the Ocean 
Switching over to the football field, it won't be long before NFL football is back in our lives. Yeah, there's just over a month until training camp begins, meaning the season's right around the corner. Right now, teams are finishing up OTAs ahead of many mandatory minicamps here in the next couple of weeks. Down in the Circle City, you see it. Anthony Richardson's shoulder looks pretty healthy to me, and much of the team is already reported ahead of next week's mandatory camp. And second-year head coach Shane Steichen is certainly liking what he's seen out of his group so far this offseason as well. It's great. I mean, this time you build the camaraderie, right? Every year is a new year, but to be out here with the guys flying around, there's some back and forth banter, competition, you know, guys talking trash. I love that stuff. So it's good to build that uh, chemistry right now, and uh, that's where we're at. Well, obviously, there's a lot of passing going on right now without pads on, uh, but you can see the competition out there with the DBs, wide receivers, linebackers, especially in the seven on seven, and then the team as well. You can feel the competition. Um, you can feel the energy from the guys, and that's how you, you know, build team off energy and, and effort, and they're giving it out here on um, these OTAs. So it's been really good to see. Colts mandatory minicamp runs June 4th through 6th next week. Teams training camp opens up in July. That's Check the Sports. Brianna, Brian, back to you guys. All right, hold on. Uh, let me check my watch here. What time is it on the moon? I'd say oh. approximately 6.42 a.m. Oh, mm. that's close. Oh, I have to okay. say it's urgent that we find out right now because NASA's working on a way to send clocks to the moon's surface. Oh, interesting. I wonder if the aliens will get annoyed by the ticking sound. Now, <laughs> this is what scientists have learned so far. They say a single day on the moon is 56 microseconds shorter than a day is on the Earth. So it's a little tiny bit shorter. But scientists say nailing down that time could prevent inconsistencies during their future space missions. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. So yeah, you don't want to have to change your clock every time. It's like, like daylight savings. Here in Indiana, we travel <laughs> between central and eastern time zones quite yeah. a bit. I think uh, they'd have the same issues when they're traveling to yeah, space, probably. right? Totally. Would you want to travel to space? Not really. Uh, Hard pass. What? You guys? I, I'd go. Yeah, I think Why it'd be not? so cool to like float around. I don't know. I just it would wanna, be. One... I just want to befriend an alien. That's all. Oh yeah, that too. It would be one <laughs> giant step that. for yeah. news anchor kind. I think. All right. I'll anchor a new. I'll anchor some sports cast from the moon. How about that? That'd be cool. That'd be awesome. That'd be so awesome. Some baseball where the yes. ball flies. Ball just never runs. stops flying. Yeah. Moonshot. Right. <laughs> oh, I yeah. get it. All right, Beverly, what's it looking like? Uh, we well, no moonshots or anything here, but what we're looking at is some sun shots. We're looking at a <laughs> lot of sunshine as we go throughout the day. We're talking temperatures in about the low to mid 50s by about 8 o'clock, but high temperatures, they're expected to top out in the mid to upper 70s. Best part about Friday, well, number one, it's Friday. Yeah. Uh, low humidity, yeah. a light breeze in the afternoon, but hey, it's going to be amazing. We're almost there, guys. All right, we'll it take it. beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Beverly. You bet. All right, well, we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Good night.